Welcome to statistics video number three, Measures of Dispersion, where I'll be looking at the range, variance, and standard deviation. The range is by far the easiest measure to understand by finding the difference between the maximum value in a data set and the minimum value you can see the overall spread of the data. And I can calculate that now. Maximum value minus the minimum value and you get a range of 120. Unfortunately by itself the range is a poor measure of dispersion because it's heavily influenced by extreme values. It also says little about how the data is dispersed between the maximum and minimum values. A better way to measure dispersion is to couple the range with the variance and standard deviation. So the variance and standard deviation take into account the values that fall between the maximum and minimum values and show how those values relate to the mean. The variance of a data set is the mean of the squared differences of each number from the data set's mean, while the standard deviation is the squared root of the variance. And you can see those formulas here. The sample variance, population variance, sample standard deviation, and population standard deviation. Now keep in mind you do not have to memorize these formulas as Excel calculates them for you. And you can see the functions here. And they're broken out between variance and standard deviation as well as population, population, and the sample and sample. And in addition there are functions that are that are dependent on whether text and or logical values are taken into account. So I've included a link to the spreadsheet in the, in the description below so feel free to download to make a note of these formulas. Now even though Excel will calculate the variance and standard deviation for you it's still important to go through them by hand a few times to understand their deeper meaning. So I'll go through one example of finding the variance and standard deviation of a sample set. and I'll be following the steps over here. So step number one is to calculate the data set's mean. Which is 17. And step number two I'll be finding the difference between each data point in the mean In step number three, I'll square those differences. In step number four, I'm going to sum those differences. Step number five, I'm going to divide the sum of those differences by n minus 1. And n is just the number of data sets, or I'm sorry, n is just the number of data points in the data set. So you can see that n is 20, so obviously n minus 1 is 19, so 122 divided by 19 is 6.42. And if I stop there, this will be the variance and if I continue on the step 6 where I'll square the variance that'll give me the standard deviation so I'll do the square root function and so the standard deviation is 2.53 and then let me go ahead and check my work here by checking by using the standard deviation of a sample function 2.53 and so what does that mean? Basically the standard deviation shows the relation that a set of data has to the mean. In this example, most of the data falls within 2.53 data points of the mean. Now let's look at a few more examples that are a little bit easier to understand. So I have four data sets here and I'm going to calculate the mean of each one of them. Then I'm going to calculate the standard deviation. So 
So you can see in this first data set the mean is 9 because each of the data points are either 12 or 6 and each of those data points are 3 data, data points away from the mean. In, in set number 2 the mean is 8 because the data points are either 10 or 6 which is 2 away from the mean and 2 is the standard deviation. In, seven, in set number 3 the numbers are 8 and 6 the average of those is 7 and 8 and 6 is 1 away from the mean and 1 is standard deviation is the standard deviation and then in set number 4 all the values are the same so the mean is 6 and since all the values are the same there's no difference and so the, sta and so the standard deviation is 0 so if you look at that another way, the higher the standard deviation, the greater the variability, and the lower the standard deviation, the lower the variability. I hope this all makes sense. Standard deviation is an extremely important concept to understand as it will come up time and time again in statistics.